the University of the West Indies, the UWI, has announced that the institution's 2024 graduation ceremonies will include unveiling a new collection of academic regalia or academic gowns, redesigned for the first time in seven and a half decades, that's 75 years. Graduation ceremonies will run from 12 October to 9 November, so they are happening right now across all five campuses. The one in Jamaica, the other in Trinidad, another in Barbados, and then there's a campus that was open in 2008, the Open Campus, and in 2019, the campus was also open in Antigua. The new design is crafted to ensure that the gowns resonate with the spirit of the contemporary Caribbean society and not that of the old or some other foreign culture. The gown now features vibrant, eye-catching designs as a tribute to the region's colors, textures, and culture. Staff members like Dr. Rajiv Venugopal and Dara Jordan Brown are recognized for their creativity and input into creating the gown. Dara Jordan Brown is recognized for conceptualizing and for sketching a custom pattern, along with Tanisia Jarrett, who is also recognized for having a part to do with designing the gown. The gowns also contain certain significant elements of the university's brand identity. They represented its dedication to sustainability and were manufactured here in the region by Donald Miranda from fabric that are most suitable for the tropical climate. The collection proudly celebrates the UWI's Caribbean identity and independence from colonial ties. Is this another act of symbolism? Just recently, I created a video about Trinidad and Tobago removing the colonial ships of Columbus from its emblem and replacing them with the national instrument, which is the steel pen. Now here we have a change of gowns and it talked about the identity of the Caribbean, but there are multiple identities in the Caribbean. And I am a big advocate of having something and not needing it than not having it and need it. So the people of African descent in the Caribbean, we cannot allow this to deter us or to make us think that there's this great kumbaya and then next thing you know, we need our unity, we need our numbers, but we are so unorganized because we did not prepare for it because we developed such trust in the system, right? And I know that most Africans will but the vanguards, we are not going to do that. Because we understand that there are multiple identities in the Caribbean that are shaped by a different history and a different culture. The Africans, the Indians, the Asians, the Europeans, we all have a different identity. And even within those groups of people, there are also some uniqueness based on what country and what community you're from. So, vanguards will not be distracted by the symbolism. Professor Sir Hilary Beckless sees this critical step as part of the institution's unique and multiple part journey of decolonialization. The story of the UWI's academic dress parallels its history or it mirrors its history. This is what the historian said. He continued in saying, we celebrated our 75 Diamond Jubilee anniversary knowing we were entering a significant new era. It is one where we stand proudly in the Caribbean. The new regalia, or the new gowns, is both symbolic and significant. We have stripped off another layer of the cloak of colonialism. So someone is pacing this very well, and don't believe for once that the colonial powers are not included in this decision making because every step that's made they made sure they are made at a time and happens at a pace for them to maintain whole they are not giving up anything they do not lose any power or any position in doing this in 2019 the collegial endorsement from the royal family 
and the Privy Council to shift the powers of the office of the visitor to Justice Rolston Fitzherbert Nelson, a position previously held by Her Majesty the Queen of England, was another significant milestone in the journey of stripping colonialism. The envisioned final step is for the UWI to enjoy a similar status to other regional bodies centered upon the Treaty of Chagoromus, such as CARICOM, a shift in power to grant its degrees as an intrinsically Caribbean institution. And I'm not discouraging it. All I'm saying is that the African people need to make sure that we don't lose touch of who we are or lose our identity by getting so caught up in this illusion of inclusion. When the University of the West Indies came into being in 1962 under the Royal Charter and Statutes, it also needed its own distinctive academic dress. At that time, the university adapted the Chancellor's gown as its first official academic dress. It was first worn by Princess Alice, the University of the West Indies' first chancellor. The collection of regalia, or the collection of gowns, for the principal officers that followed has served the institution to the present day. The careful management process for redesigning the UWI's academic dress started with the university's Senate approval in 2019 and was led by a subcommittee chaired by University Register Dr. Maurice D. Smith. In 2021, the University Finance and General Purposes Committee gave its stamp of approval stipulating that the gowns were to be made in the Caribbean. Traditionally, graduation and other formal ceremonies commence with an academic procession and or chancellor's possession or chancellor's body. This year, the university committee and onlookers will witness the spirit of Caribbeanness in the graduation processions as principal officers don the new regalia. I saw that there was a lot of people of African descent involved in the design of this new gown, and I applaud that. We have to ensure that we remember that because people look like us, that don't mean that they are of us. That don't mean that they are of the same mindset and thinking. Remember, throughout history, many of our own people that look like us and who are from our own group have sold us out. So none of this stuff ever really mean anything to me unless I know what the person is about. What's their affiliation? What's their connection? What do they think about us and the culture? Because everyone loves the culture. But when you start talking about us as a people, they shy away from that. They are proud of saying that they are this nationality and that nationality, but they shy away from saying that they are people of African descent.